Hello everyone and welcome back for part two of the Q learning series. Super excited to get started on this. We're gonna start on the actual implementation here. If you haven't seen the first video, definitely go check that out. I sort of explained the basics of Q learning. Um, today, we're gonna actually start diving into deep Q learning. In the last tutorial, we talked just about sort of tabular Q learning and how we can use Q learning for simple examples like tic-tac-toe and stuff. Today, we're actually gonna start implementing aiming towards a full implementation to work with Atari games. So ideally, by the end of this series, we should have agents playing Atari games or maybe even more um, and doing very well at that. So there's lots of stuff to cover. I'm gonna cover it over multiple videos. I do want to get to it, but first just a basic outline of what we'll be doing. Um, so first, oh, this should be a, there we go. Um, so this is what we'll be doing in this video, getting the basic environment working and basically making the architecture for the deep Q network. And I'll also, of course, be explaining as I go what all this is. Uh, in the next video after this, you can expect to start working on some of like the, the pre-processing for the data, um, the reward formatting and the experience replay, all the data heavy stuff. And then the video after, after that, after this one, or after after this one or after the next one, we'll start working on the actual training um, and go into how we actually train our model to do better. So again, there's a lot to go over, so I wanna dive right into it. The first thing, our imports. We will be using PyTorch. Uh, you know, if you use TensorFlow though or something else, you should still be able to follow along just fine. The logic's all the same. And I think the, uh, it, hopefully the code should be fairly easy to understand and easy to translate to any any other machine learning library. So no need to worry there, I think. Uh, Jim, first of all, is uh, OpenAI's basically way to use reinforcement learning environments. Uh, it's basically a super easy way to use things like Atari environments and whatnot. So we don't have to set them up ourselves. <clears throat> CV2, we will be used for image pre-processing. Uh, as we are playing Atari games, we get a 2D image. We need to be able to process that. And then matplotlib and seaborn for plotting out any data we might want to look at after our run throughs. Cool, so let's dive into it. Import that. And the next thing we wanna do is make our first environment, which is actually super easy. All we have to do is this, right? We say gym.make, and then we give the name of the environment we want. We can actually get a list of environments. If we get, type in openai gym, gym.openai.com, and go to over to environments, you can see there's lots of stuff here. We will be particularly interested in the Atari games here. We'll be starting out with Breakout. If you've never seen Breakout, it's a fairly simple game. Um, essentially, it's right here, right? You're just trying to use your paddle to break the blocks up here. It's like a one player pong, I guess, like kind of. Uh, cool. So first we want to figure out what are the actual state and action spaces of this, right? So a state space is what are all the possible states we can be in? In other words, in our case, it would be what are all the possible arrangements of pixels? And then the action space would be how many actions do we have and what are they? So in our case, I think we have four. It's a no operation, a start game, go left and go right, I think. We can confirm this with actually this right here, right? So we can print this out. You just do an m.action space and an m.observation space. And now when we run this, we should make the environment and also get these. So this was correct for discrete actions. And then a 210 by 160 image with three channels. Uh, so that's for your R, G, and B values. So this will be the shape of our images. Now we can actually get our first observation, an observation, right? It's just like a state. So we say observation equals m dot reset. Um, and if we do this, we can actually print this right now. So this is what, what this has done. It started a new rollout or a new episode. Episode basically just means like a playthrough of the game, right? So we print out observation right now. We should get a bunch of pixel data. It's mostly zeros because the majority of the screen, I believe is black or about half of it. Um, we can print out the shape. We should get the same thing as we got right here, right? Cool, so that's all good. Just sanity check right there. And now what we actually wanna do is we want to essentially be able to play out episodes of this game, or essentially we wanna be able to play out rounds of the game. So then we can get da uh, data and we can use that to train our model that we will create. So the way we do that is first, we should probably define a max number of steps. We do this so that the maybe the uh, or sorry, not the environment, the, for example, if we were to have a policy that kept choosing just no up and did nothing the entire time, the game might never end. Um, so just to, to have a limit there. 
And then essentially what we want to do is loop through and say for step in the range of max steps. The first thing we want to do is to choose what action we want to take, right? So that's going to be one of four actions. Right now, we're just going to choose randomly. Eventually, our model will be choosing, or our agent will be choosing this for us, right? Um, but for now, we are just going to get a random integer between zero and three inclusive. So zero would be the first action, third would be three would be the last. Now, once we have our action, we can enact that in the environment. So to actually enact our action, so go left or go right or do something else. Uh, let's do this we do m dot step right so step will and we pass in our action this will actually do this action and it passes back our next reward so the next state we're in right so what the pixels look like a reward for our action i believe in breakout you get a one for breaking any blocks i'm i think the rest you just get zeros for everything else um i may be wrong <laughs> you might want to double check me but I believe that's the reward function. And then done will essentially tell us whether or not we have reached the last sort of state, whether or not this was the last state, if the game's over or not. And then we don't care about this part right here. I think it's just extra info. Uh, cool. So what we can actually do is we can see this playing out now, right? So we can test to make sure this works by saying m.render. This will actually show us the environment. We can actually test that up here, right? If we say m.reset. Um, oh yeah, we will want to do like here to reset, right? Because this restarts the match basically um, and puts us in a fresh state. Uh, so we can do m.reset and then m.render. And if we just run this right here, we should get, yeah, just sort of this, oh, disappeared on me. <laughs> oh, actually one second. I may need to fix it so you guys can see it. Okay, I am back. I just need to make sure that this was appearing. So this is what happens when we render this. Um, so I just had to adjust my settings there. Now that we have that, we can move on and we can actually say, we want to add a little delay in between these. So let's add a 0.05 second delay. I'm gonna add a delay between rendering for each loop or else it's just gonna go way too fast for us to understand what's happening. Uh, and then we'll just say if done break, right? So if we finish this before, essentially if we finish um, the episode before we hit the max, yeah, before we hit the max number of steps, we do want to stop running this. So now if we run this, we should see our agent playing. There we go. Already missed that. Oh, nice, nice. It's doing about as well as you would expect for having random actions, but it works. So there we have our environment working. And the next thing we want to do is we're just going to quickly set up our deep QNet work architecture. I'll be using the same parameters as in the original 2013 paper, which I will link in the... Uh, description as long as I remember. <laughs> um, so let's actually make that. So we are going to do that right here. So we're going to create a new class, call it DQN for deep Q network. And right, we're going to be trying to predict Q values for this. And if you remember, Q values are essentially our expected reward over the course of a whole episode, right? So we play out our game and the we're trying to predict from a given state how much so not, not from the whole episode, but from the current state, right? So we'll be trying to predict, given a current action we take in a current state, how much reward do we expect that to generate, right? Because if we can predict that, all we have to do is take the best actions, right? The actions with the highest key values, ideally, um, to get the best results. So we are going to be predicting the key values because, again, remember, we can't keep all these in a table. We have so many possible states because we're now working with pixels, right? It's a, it's a continuous environment. Um, so we have to use prediction. Uh, so let's make this. So we're just gonna basically make a convolutional architecture. Uh, if you don't know what a convolutional neural network is, I recommend you look that up, or you can just assume it's a black box where you give it an input and an output. Um, you know, that works too. Uh, I won't be explaining that in this video though. So these are the layers we're gonna use, right? So we're gonna have three convolutional layers, or no, two convolutional layers and one linear layer. Um, so we have, we start out with, so I, I define in frames here. I don't think I've defined that yet. Um, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna end up stacking frames. For right now, we'll just leave this as one and we'll, actually we'll leave this as three because we have three RGB channels. We'll come back to this later and, and fix that up. But um, what we have now is we have, we're going from our RGB layer to 16 filters with a kernel size of 18, a strength of four. 
Um, then we go up to uh, 32 filters, a kernel size of four, stride of two, and then we have a linear layer that is, oh, this might actually be incorrect. No, this is correct. This should be correct. Um, uh, we're going from this many units to 256 units. We are, by the way, using ReLU activations for all of these. And then our final layer, uh, we just do a linear to the number of actions we have. And the in actions, we are going to take in as a parameter. So the very standard um, thing here. The next thing you wanna do is just define the forward pass of this. And again, if this is confusing to you, definitely go back and watch my tutorial series on just creating neural networks. Um, I don't explain convolutional neural networks, uh, but I do explain sort of just fully connected net neural networks, um, which will help. And then you'll probably want to look up convolutional neural networks. But anyway, don't need that. So what we want to do is we have our four layers. We just want to pass in, once we get an observation, we want to pass that through. Um, our first layer, our second layer, we will then reformat this to flatten out our data, right? Because we were just passing it through convolutional layers. We need to flatten it out so we can now pass it through our third layer, which is a fully connected layer. Then our fourth layer, then ideally we should get our Q values. So we should be able to run an example. Let's just make sure this works, right? So let's create a new DQN, close DQN. In our case, we have four actions, right? Let's make sure that runs, looks good. Now we can ideally actually pass through a, let's say np.zeros. And what is the shape of this gonna be? It's going to be, what was it again? <laughs> I'm forgetting. Um, we are going to be actually resizing this. That's something I think I forgot to mention. Um, we will be resizing our images. So we start out with 210 by 160. Um, let me double check what I did in my reference code. I believe I did 84 by 110, or is it 110 by 84? Oh gosh, we'll just try both. Um, <laughs> it's got to be one or the other. Um, in the original paper, they actually use 84 by 84. They size it down to 110 by 84 and then crop it down. Uh, we won't be doing the cropping. The actual reason they cropped it was just because of the fact that they it was just a limitation of libraries at the time. We don't have that limitation. Anyway, I'll go more into detail on that in the next episode, but I believe this should be 110, 84, and then we have three channels. So this is just what the same shape as what our input will be, right? Let's make sure this works. It does not. Oh no. I put tensor. Oh yes, because we need to, this does need to be a tensor. Um, actually, you should just do a, we should put a one in front of this because we're passing one example through. So we'll say in, oh, that doesn't work. Um, oh, uh, input data will equal uh, tensor. Okay, I don't think we actually need the mp.zeros here, but I don't care. What's our issue now? Ah, it must be. 84 by, oh, that's right. So I, I'm new to PyTorch. I forgot, you're supposed to put the channels first, right? So we have three channels, 84, 110. Is it, oh boy, what's happening? 110 by 84, I don't think that was there, but okay, I'll be right back as soon as I figure out what's going wrong. Okay, I am back less than a minute later. All we need to do is add a dot flow right here because our um, I guess this was interpreted as a double, whereas the Q net or our network was expecting floats or something along those lines. So now if we pass it through, as you can see, we do get we do get a tensor with four values. Awesome. So these are our estimated Q values. As you might have noticed, they are completely random right now. Um, but in the future, what we want to be able to do, right, is we want to come here and we want to say, first we want to create our DQ and then we want to say, basically DQN or like our action will equal our DQN and then this will be our observation or we should say like we'll have some filter function right and we'll pass our observation to that. That will go into our DQN and we'll get not an act, we'll get a Q values and then our act will be something like act equals the arg max. I think you can do into the arg max. Um, I'm actually not sure if you can do argmax. I'm gonna assume you can. We'll get back to that though, uh, of the Q values. Each step is here there. Um, mm, 
yeah. So it'd be something like this, right? So we get our key values and then we take the max and then that's what action we take. Um, so this is essentially what we're building up for. I am going to cut us off here because even though I don't think we've gotten through too much yet, it's I think it's still a lot to take in. There's going to be a lot more. The next episode is also going to sort of ramp up this a little bit. Uh, so let's just go through a quick summary before we end this up. Uh, first, of course, just importing libraries. Then what we do, we don't need this anymore. We create our environment, which is in this case, an Atari breakout environment. Um, we check what the act action in observation spaces are. We see that we have four possible discrete actions. So zero through three are our action choices. And an observation space of 210 by 160 by three, which essentially means we have a pixel, uh, we have pixels of this width, this height, or is it backwards? I don't know. Um, and then our RGB channel. What we did then is we created a archi our architecture for our deep Q network, which will essentially be predicting Q value. Q values. Oh, I can't say it right now. And this takes in our pixels. That said, that being said, we will resize this to a smaller size. We pass that through um, through this forward function, and we get out these estimated Q values. Of course, I think you've all noticed there's no training function here yet, so this is just going to spit out absolute nonsense um, because we will be covering the training in, I believe, two episodes. So, what we do then, though is we go and we create, we reset our environment, essentially starting a new episode or a new playthrough of a game. And then we loop through and we choose a random action, enact that action in the environment, receive our new data, including an observation, a reward, and a something that tells us if, it's, if this is a terminal state. We render it so we can see what's going on. Uh, and at some point we end up stopping and finishing the playthrough. So that's all we're going to do in this episode. Again, we'll, this is going to be going on for a while. We have a, or at least I have a lot of stuff planned for this and I'm super excited. Definitely check in for the next video. Should be out in roughly two days or now if you're watching this in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel greatly. And thank you for watching.